Hey everybody, Anish Majumdar here, career coach of the Fiercely Ambitious. Hope wherever you are that you are having a lovely day. Uh, and I want to focus this video around the topic of how do you deal with a hostile interviewer? You know, how do you deal with that situation and keep your cool and most importantly, right, give yourself the best possible opportunity to get the outcome that you came there for? Right now, I, I want to share some advice that I think is going to go really against the grain. Uh, advice that is pulled directly from my experience uh, over a decade now, working one on one with job seekers at every level to help them actually successful, successfully do this as quickly as possible. So, and the first most important thing I'm going to say is let's get rid of the idea that there is any meaningful success possible without periodically running into this. Hostility, resistance, anger. Challenge. These things are natural indicators as your career starts going up and you start dealing with bigger and bigger problems. Guess what? It's not always going to be hunky dory. It's not always going to be nice and placid and calm, right? So that should not be a goal that we're striving for, right? Our goal should not be to eliminate hostility and resistance. Our goal should be how can we make the most of it, understand what's really going on so that we can navigate it successfully. And the first most uh, um, tip I want to share with you here, aside from what we've been talking about, is this. Recognize the opportunity present within this hostility. Okay? That means pain. It means that if you're talking with a gatekeeper, usually oftentimes it's pain related to actually not being able to fill the role. You know? This person usually doesn't have bottom line authority. Right? If you are submitting your resume cold and you came in that way, you're usually going to be talking first and foremost with something, someone like that. And so maybe they've been spending five months, you know, they, they, this, this assignment got dropped on their lap. They've been suggesting people, maybe they even hired someone, didn't work out. Now there's increased pressure on this person and now they're just sick and tired of it. They're just angry. And now you're getting the brunt of that. Okay. If you're talking with a senior level leader at a company, the pain is most probably related to the company and what, what they're doing. So maybe I have bottom line authority for growing this company right? And I feel like a failure because for the last 12 months, we've had to let go of our staff. We can't grow the way that we can. We're dealing with all sorts of endemic issues and Jesus, okay, here we go. Let's, let's do this interview and, and pretend like that's going to work, right? Whatever it is, understand that the resistance is a blaring signal that, the, that there's pain here and where there's pain, there are offers. Where there's pain, there is motivation to solve that pain. There's no offers if that's not there. And so this may not be coming out in the most productive way, but look at it as early proof that something very real is going on here that you can solve and that will help. Here's another thing that will help. Break the state so you can sort of reset the table, right? If I'm talking about a particular line of dialogue, perhaps it relates to our marketing strategy or the growth strategy, or perhaps I'm trying to dig in to see what's been going on. Let's say, hey, can, we, can you give me some numbers here in terms of the last two, three months so I can better understand what's going on and I just get shot down. Fine. I'm not going to keep going back to that well for now. I'm going to break the state, make a joke, share an anecdote. You know, here's what was going on. Uh, you know, uh, I woke up this morning, you know, as usual, our kids were just piled on in bed. You know what I mean? So if you could have seen my hair and my thing, uh, 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 well, you know, when I woke up, I doubt we would even be having this conversation right now. Or, you know, what's a guilty pleasure that's been keeping you sane in the midst of this crazy year we've, we, we've had? You know what I mean? What is What have you been getting in trouble for from your wife or your husband? You know, it doesn't matter what it is. As long as it's very, very different from what, you, what you've been talking about, it's very warm and it's, and it's revealing a little bit about who you are. Sharing a little bit of that human perspective, encouraging this other person to also engage with you in that human way. Very, very important. Look, when you're dealing with hostility, forget about what you were trying to do in terms of, of moving a conversation in one way. If there's not a free interchange of ideas, if there's not trust, if there's not a, a sense of getting beyond this and getting to a more productive place, you're not going to get it anyway. So, so temporarily take the professional strategy out of it, break the state. And, and you should be looking to see a change in this person's body language, a change in this person's tonality, a change in the ease with which they can, they communicate with you. And from there you can, you can redirect and you can find your way back and you will find a much more receptive person usually on that other side. Okay. So here's another one. I, it's a big trap that I fall into all the time right? Avoid drawing parallels, right? What does that mean? So I'm talking with you, right? And you're, you're throwing tons of shade my way. And I, st I feel myself, uh-oh, I'm starting to get angry myself, 
you know? I'm starting to get pissed off myself because right now it's partly this and partly I'm remembering that terrible boss I had three, th three years ago that was displaying the same patterns, you know? And now my blood is up and I'm responding to you the same way I responded to him, right? Escalation will not help hostility. Okay, escalation, you're not gonna beat beat hostility with more hostility. That's not how it goes, right? Um, so the idea here is, can you consciously say, hey, what's going on right now? Hey, Anish, or hey, you know, your name, insert your name, right? Remember, this is not that person. This is not Jim, your boss. This is whoever this person is. This is a unique human being. This is, they're dealing with their own situation, right? Our job is to help as best as we can for the time that we are here. I can't help them if I'm already, you know, I've already stopped responding to them for what is actually going on. And now I've started washing over every negative quality that I experienced in that job for five years. And now you're just, uh, uh, you know, an addendum to that, right? So that's not going to help. So I'm consciously, as I'm, whenever I'm dealing with hostility, I'm asking myself, am I making this personal? Am I making this more than it is? Am I treating this person not for the unique human being that they are, but this other person, you know, this other demon in my, in my mind, you know, the more you think about that and you can reset to that, the easier it'll be. Here's, um, the last one. Okay. Shortcut to compassion. This is arguably going to be the hardest thing to do. Easily the most effective. Okay. Um, there's two things I like to do when I'm confronted with someone who's kind of flipping out. The first thing I'll, I'll ask myself is Anish, did you ever do that? Did you ever, um, respond in a less than ideal way? because you were, you were feeling rough and you were feeling like things were not working and you were truly worried about the future as so many companies and leaders are. Um, yeah. And if I can say, yeah, immediately there's a change in my energy and in how I'm dealing with this person because I'm forcing a connection there. I know what that's like. I'm looking at this behavior and I'm saying, I remember when I was doing this, God, God, what a nightmare. You know what I mean? And now there's immense compassion there because I also remember how bad I felt back then, you know, um, um, it doesn't feel good to act like that. No one, unless you're a sociopath, feels good lashing out like that or being hostile. It's because circumstances have run away with you usually. Okay. So I'm asking myself, did I ever? And the other thing I will do on the heels of did I ever, is I will say as if act as if this person were your brother and he really needs your help. Act as if this person were, and put the person's name to it, you know, Arna Majumdar or Anish Majumdar or Aaron Cummings or whatever, whatever the name is, first name, last name, right? And ask yourself, can I treat this person as if that were them? If that was my brother or if that was my family member, right? Um, I'm not, there's no moment in which I just say, ah, whatever. You, you, you're, well, get out of here, loser. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I'm never going to write you off. I can't write you off in that way right? But I do have an obligation to help you. I do have an obligation to say, hey, it's going to be all right. And I have an obligation to say, it's okay. You're not going to scare me by being upset. You're not going to scare me by being hostile. I know that you're here and that we're speaking for a reason. And I know that if we can move beyond this, that it's going to help every single one of us here. And that's what I believe. And so, yeah, I'll hold your hand, even if you're upset. And yeah, I'll, I'll engage with you. I'm not going to escalate. I'm not going to make it worse. I'm not going to make it more than it is, but I will be here with you. And it's really amazing because the people who are in the most pain and the people who are often the most resistant, it's kind of like an injured animal. You know, they'll bark, they'll, they'll, they'll gnash their teeth. You know what I mean? And if you just don't take that bait and you're just like, okay, you good? Did you get that out of your system? Yeah. Can we talk a little bit more about what's been going on here? It's amazing what happens because when they see that that doesn't scare you away, most people who initially display hostility become puppy dogs. And what happens on the other side of that is an immense amount of, of trust given to you, of likability given to you, and usually authority ultimately given to you because it is, those are the people that we want right now. When we're freaking out, when we're panicking, we want people who are not going to go running for the hills. We want people who are strong, have the courage of their convictions, and we want people who can successfully navigate the plane even though there is turbulence there. Turbulence is opportunity. Hostility is opportunity masquerading as something else. Don't forget that, all right? If you want to go deeper in my world, I encourage you to, to hit up helloanish.com, H-E-L-L-O-A-N-I-S-H.com right now. Make it the next move that you do. It will be the best decision you have made in a very long time when it comes to your career. All right, guys, keep the questions coming. Have a wonderful day. Talk soon.